If you are anything like me, and I don't know why you would want to be, uh, but you would have an interest in, in very early railroad history. Pre-20th century railroading is a fairly scarce thing in the model railroad world, and pre-1850 railroading is even rarer. Only one manufacturer has thrown their hat into the ring for a mass-produced model, and that manufacturer is none other than Bachman Trains. Bachman has always had a passing interest in pre-20th century railroading. The company is well known for making old-time 440s and rolling stock from the 1860s to 1880s era. But did you know, Bachman used to make pre-1850s railroad equipment. This is the John Bull, one of the earliest successful American locomotives that was first manufactured by Bachman in the mid-1980s as part of their classic collector series line. John Bull was one of four early era train sets offered by Bachman over the years, with them also offering the DeWitt Clinton, the Prussia, and the Lafayette. John Bull was originally built in England in 1831 for the Camden and Amboy Railroad in New Jersey, where it would serve the company until 1866. Originally named Stevens after the CNA's president, the locomotive quickly became affectionately named John Bull by engine crews after a cartoonish personification of England. It was originally an 040, but the locomotive would become very notable in American railroad history for being the first locomotive to be fitted with a cow catcher, which would become a staple on almost all American locomotives. This removed the front drive axle, making this locomotive effectively a 420. This locomotive would remain in this arrangement for the remainder of its life, although it would receive a covered four-axle tender, cab, bell, and a headlight before being retired. After serving the Camden and Amboy Railroad, John Bull would be put into storage until the CNA would become part of the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1871. The Pennsylvania would restore and backdate the old locomotive as a promotional novelty. The PRR would donate the John Bull to the Smithsonian Institution about 10 years later, where it would sometimes venture out of the museum for special events. The locomotive would remain a static display in the museum, with it operating under compressed air lifted up on jacks for its 100th birthday, and the Pennsylvania taking it out on a publicity tour as a static exhibit in 1933 and 1934. The locomotive would be returned to the Smithsonian until 1981, where it would be found good to operate once more for its 150th birthday. After this, the locomotive would turn to, return to static display and would remain static to this day, although in 1985, it would be carried aboard a Boeing 737 aircraft for an exhibition in Texas, which makes it the oldest locomotive in the world to ever be flown to a destination. Bachman's model, the John Bull, depicts a later John Bull as exhibited by the Pennsylvania Railroad in the 1870s or so. Here's mine, and it's not exactly mint condition, but I think it's in good enough condition to get the point across. The locomotive itself is actually unpowered, which makes sense, as this locomotive is minuscule. Here's a Hot Wheels car for scale, and here is a 10-wheeler for scale. The locomotive is actually quite detailed, especially for Bachman at the time with intricate gold parts to really help make this railroading legend come to life. The pilot does not actually swivel, but if your curves are tight enough to derail this little guy, what the hell is your track? There's a small spring on the front to keep it on the rails, and I found it to actually track really well. It's not the smoothest rolling thing in the world, but it's not awful, and a little drop of oil has made it significantly better. The tender is easily my favorite part of this set. It's so small, yet they managed to cram a motor into this thing in the 1980s. It's pretty weighty, and it has this nice quality feel. What I find particularly nice is these solid metal handrails on the top and the sides of the tender. I also very much like this wood grain texture mold into the plastic. That's a really nice touch. Gives it that little taste of extra authenticity. The tender is a horn hook coupler along the rear and couples the locomotive with a small pin and loop system. It doesn't feel great and it doesn't feel robust at all, but I've never actually had an issue with the locomotive and tender becoming uncoupled during operation. Bachman also produced a coach to go along with the locomotive. They're not anything fancy, but they still have that very nice quality feel that the locomotive had. My favorite features of these cars is this very fun rounded handrail on the ends and the outside bracing running along the sides that actually cover the wheels underneath the car. Lifting up the body reveals an interior that sure exists. Of course, these have to be pulled by what may be one of the lightest model locomotives ever made, so these cars are built quite light, and they actually have plastic wheels, but these have to be the most free-rolling plastic-wheeled cars I've ever seen. Putting this little thing onto the track is quite a sight to behold, and it's a very fun concept to look at. Now, I know everyone really wants to watch John Bulls inevitably stall out on a switch, and we will get to that. But let's talk about the drivetrain first. 
This locomotive is a split chassis model, which means that one side of the chassis is negative and one is positive, which makes for very good electrical contact. This was a very common mm, practice back in the 1980s. One axle of the tender picks up for one side and one picks up for the other. And once this thing gets up and running, it's actually quite a smooth little thing, which really surprised me because of its age and, well, just look at it. It's got pretty good speed control with the top end being clocked around 60 miles an hour, which I found hysterical. Of course, with a wheelbase this short, you're gonna know this thing is just gonna hate switches. Like, it despises them. So if your existing layout has switches, you may wanna shy away from this locomotive unless you have electric frogs. If you get one and it's like mine and it stalls all the time on your layout, you may have a spring that has popped out of alignment. Open up the tender by pushing this side away from the metal box on the chassis and the shell will come off to reveal the brick. Loosen these screws holding the faux frames on and you'll be greeted by a little copper spring. Simply push it back in like this and it should run just fine. After doing this, mine ran almost flawlessly and even can do a pretty decent crawl. The biggest other issue with this locomotive is pretty minor and may not even be an issue at all, but it's this pulling power. The set this locomotive came in with three coaches and the John Bull locomotive will muscle the contest around with little issue. I bought my set at the train show which included five coaches and the locomotive couldn't move all five and it really struggled with four. Again, this isn't a huge issue because I can really only ever imagine you hauling the three cars that came with this set. Bachman would first introduce the John Bull in the mid-1980s, with the first time I could find it in a catalog being 1985. The John Bull would also debut with an add-on coach as a separate sale item, and would later be offered as a standalone locomotive, complete with a special collector's box, just like the train set. The Bachman John Bull saw only one change throughout its entire production run, with a new pin-and-loop coupling system being introduced sometime in the early 2000s to replace the horn hooks. This set would remain a staple of Bachman's lineup until 2008, when it would be phased out and replaced with the Pegasus set with a 420 Norris steam locomotive. I am not quite sure what the consensus is on this set, but I've heard it called as the best Bachman early period set and is one of the best early period trains, if not the best, ready to run in HO scale. This set is incredibly easy to find with searches on eBay yielding tons of results. Makes sense, as this set was produced for over 20 years. Bachman's John Bull is a small, colorful little train set representing one of the United States' earliest and most important railroads. It's fun, it's unique, and it's a bit temperamental. But if you have an interest in some of the earliest railroads, know that Bachman lovingly crafted a train set just for you.